Welcome back, this is Yama Jack, and today we got Gunslinger nuked Suicidal Endless, and I am mad. I just did 40 minutes of Suicidal Nuked Endless, um, talking about a topic that I really, really, really want to talk about, and um, now I just have to, like, start all over. <laughs> oh, God. I'm mad, dude. My um, my disc got filled up. I still haven't installed that stupid uh, hard drive yet. Ow. Um. <clears throat> also, I got. Uh... Well, we'll talk about that next episode. Um, this episode I want to talk about uh, sailing. Uh, so that's where we're doing endless. I'm not gonna make the same mistake and just keep playing <laughs> the same like four rounds over and over again. Um, so we'll 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 talk about uh, sailing. And live aboard lives and, and all this kind of stuff in this episode because uh, I've been doing a lot of research. It's been like my whole, this whole last day has been um, like research and uh, like just kind of looking at videos and stuff just to, to kind of like immerse myself in, in the uh, in the lifestyle and, and uh, just I've been really, really excited about it and I really want to do it. So it's been it's been a long it's been a, it's been a very exciting day we'll say, um, and uh, yeah. So uh, I've been looking at like the affordability of it, you know, like can I just just straight up can I afford to do this, you know, like is it in my budget currently? Uh, and yeah, no, I, I think it is for sure, um, because you you get to you get to save a lot of money when you're living on a board, when you're living on a boat. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like saving money is a little bit disingenuous. It's more that there are a lot of things that you can't buy, um, so you don't have to spend money on them because you don't you don't get that luxury. Um, you know, you don't get the option to pay for it. Like uh, for instance, an internet bill. I pay like a hundred and ten dollars a month on uh, on internet. Right now, if I'm living on a boat, I'm not. That bill ain't there. You know, like there isn't a place for the internet to get hooked up to. You know, like maybe in the future, you know, I get satellite internet, and because uh, you can get like pretty decent speeds on satellite internet. Um, so maybe in the future, you know, maybe we get. Uh, we get internet on the boat, like proper good internet. Um, but like that's that's it, it's signi it's a significant cost. Like it's it's like fifteen thousand U.S. dollars or something like that to get uh, a um, like internet satellite thing installed on the boat, and then you you might have like a monthly fee as well. Um, probably pretty cheap, but you, you, it'd be there. Um, so you've got to concern yourself with that, and uh, so you get to you get to save that like hundred bucks there, right? Uh, next up is car insurance. Don't have to pay for it. So that's another like hundred and seventy dollars a month or something like that that I'm spending right now that I just don't have to spend. So we're down like two hundred eighty bucks out of the budget that uh, is money I just don't have to to pay for 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 things I don't have to pay for. Uh, rent here. Typically about a thousand dollars a month, um, on a boat, uh, in a in a harbor in a marina. Typically looking at like six hundred bucks a month, um, for internet and uh, well, like really really bad internet, uh, electricity. Although like the more you use, the more you pay, um, and then uh, also. Um, you'd also have uh, like the actual like spot to, to pay for like where you're actually putting your ship. You have to pay for that uh, that area as well. Um, so that's like six hundred dollars. You save like five hundred bucks a month on uh, on rent there. Um, so we're down like seven hundred and eighty dollars, something like that, if you live in a marina, which is pretty good, right? Like that's that's pretty big savings. However, you can go farther. You can go farther than that. Um, 
you can, uh, instead of living in a marina, you can just go anchor somewhere, which is free. So you don't have to pay for the marina fees and everything. Um, and uh, you just get to anchor and sleep. And then, you know, in the morning, whenever you want to go, just set sail and go to a different anchoring spot. And, uh, you know, keep having a different view every morning when you wake up, pretty much, you know? That's that's an option there, too. Um, so, yeah. Um, it's cool, right? So that, 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 that then saves, like, another $600. You're, like, $1,400 saved a month living on a boat, which is incredible savings. And, uh, you know, at that point in time, I can, like, keep my phone and, like... You know, get, uh, like, I can keep some luxuries, um, for sure, and then, uh, you know, kind of get by, right? So, you know, maybe have, like, a finance plan on a boat or something like that and, and live on, uh, on anchorages, which would be doable. Not the most comfortable lifestyle, by any stretch of the imagination, but, like... It's doable, you know what I mean? Like, it's not not doable, right? So, yeah. I, uh, I, I could afford it, like, today, basically. Like, I, I could go, you know, finance a, a boat for a couple hundred bucks a month or something like that. And uh, live on anchorages and stuff like that. Like, I could go, I could go do that right now, right? That, that's, that's completely, entirely within my budget, like, right now, you know? Totally doable, manageable, right? It's in, it's in budget. However, I don't know how to live on a boat yet. <laughs> I don't know how to do it. So, um, I have to learn first. And then, uh, yeah. So, and, and uh, the other thing is, is, is when you make a decision like this to, to go in and live on a boat or in a tiny house, you're going to move to... You know, you're gonna move to a different country or, or whatever. Unless it's something that you have to do, you really don't want to give up your luxuries in life, right? You don't want to give up your luxuries. You don't want to give up things that that kind of keep you going, that keep you motivated and excited and happy. You don't want to give these things up because you know it's it's going to be a stressful life, and you want to have those to kind of keep you grounded and. Uh, and uh, kind of, kind of be able to, to continue being happy and moving forward. Um, so, yeah, um, for me, sort of like the main thing that I, I'd have to keep, even after moving on to a ship, is I'd have to keep making these KF2 videos. So I've been thinking about how I would do that within the context of like a live aboard lifestyle, because there are a few problems that come into play when um, you uh, you live on a boat with regards to making YouTube gaming Let's Plays, okay? Um, the first of which is internet. So the internet sucks on a, on a boat at best, you know, unless you go for some really, really expensive, you know, satellite internet solutions which uh, I don't have the ability to do currently. Uh, unless you do that, pretty much the best you're going to get is your phone's data. Um, or if you pull into a marina or something like that, um, you know, you'd have um, your, uh, you'd have, you'd have, you'd have Wi-Fi at the marina or something like that. Uh, or alternatively, you could head out to public Wi-Fi somewhere. Like, you know, Anchor, Head out to land, go to public Wi-Fi, and uh, and do whatever you need to do on the internet out there. If you need uh, a little bit quicker internet, um, and that's you know again public Wi-Fi. It's not like great, but like it's it's better than like not having internet. <laughs> so um, th those are your like options on a boat, right? So when it comes to uploading the KF2 videos, two of them every day, it's it's a little bit hard to. 
Well, I guess I guess what we have to do. So yeah, so there, there's the internet problem, right? Like getting fast internet is a problem. Um, but then the other problem is just like having internet at all isn't something that can be done every day. So like I what would end up happening is I'd have to like record KF2, you know, at least like two videos a day or at least averages out to two videos a day. Um, and then uh, when I'm able to go and get an internet, upload them all, make all the thumbnails and all that kind of stuff and um, get them ready to go, right? Um, so, yeah, that would be a bit of a challenge and I think what would happen just so that I can make it actually work is um, probably end up like making the episodes shorter at first and then one of the other problems is uh, is electricity like you only have so much power in a boat you know like whatever boat I get is gonna have solar um, because it's gotta have solar um, and uh, you know like excuse me um, you only get so much power from those solar panels like and on a sunny day with uh, with a few solar panels strapped to your boat, you could look at like maybe five kilowatt hours, right? How much? Uh, like, my computer probably uses I don't know, like the computer that I have right now, a day, probably more than that. So like my computer could not get powered as much as I am powering it on a boat. I also wouldn't want to take my computer onto a boat. <laughs> is the other thing. Um, so, oh, we got some kind of a message. What is it? Eight degrees in Langford, high nine, low five. Um, so any, anyway, you know, like, uh, it's not really there. So, I don't know if I'd have the time to really record all the videos and like make all the thumbnails and all that kind of stuff. Probably would. Um, I, I could probably find the time for that every day. Um, but, you know, again, probably having to do, like, shorter episodes or something like that. Uh, at least at the start, just to, uh, kind of, like, see how it kind of fits in to the whole lifestyle. Um, and, uh, see if it's, uh, something that I'm going to be able to make work, you know? Um, because I don't know. Um... But, yeah. Uh, and then, you know, like, you know there, there's other things on a boat that use power too, right? Not just my laptop that I'd, uh, I'd be using uh, on the boat. There's, there's also, you know, I would want a water maker, for sure. Uh, a water maker is, uh, it, it takes the seawater and then desalinates it and, like, turns it into to proper, fresh water. Um... So I would want to have one of those, for sure, on a boat. If I had a boat, I would have one of those. Um, for sure. Uh, it's, like an, it's like a requirement for me to have a water maker. Because, um, uh, yeah, otherwise, like, for me, like, when you're sailing around the world or whatever, having limited water, I, I, I don't like the way that sounds. You know what I mean? Like, even if it's, you know you have enough water to last and like you know you look at it and you're like yeah whatever like we have enough water there's no way we're gonna drink all that water you know um to me it's just I, i'd rather just have the peace of mind knowing that i have more water than i will need and i can make more like pretty easily uh, and that even water makers use a lot of electricity they are very power hungry um so you know I would want to have uh, fresh water because, like, that's that's one of the scariest things on a boat is uh, is your water supply. You know, like like you got waves crashing, at you, you got you know things breaking on your boat. But uh, you know what what really is going to determine how long you can go is how much water can you get. You know, like you can find fish in the ocean, so you can catch fish. You don't want to rely on that. Um, but you, you can catch fish, 
you can stop at an island somewhere and probably find, you know, food to uh, to eat. You can store an enormous amount of uh, of vitamins in case you you run out of uh, fruits or or whatever to get your your vitamin let's see or whatever what is whatever it is that you need on you know whatever it is that uh, the sailors needed their limes for. Um, but uh, water is always going to be the deciding factor. And then, you know, you can make water yourself. You know, worst case scenario, your water maker breaks, you're out of water. You can make your own water. Um, it's not like that hard. Uh, it's not really something you want to do, though. Like, it's more time and energy and resources being spent making water that didn't need to be spent, that you didn't plan to be spent. Um, so. Yeah, not really... Uh, I think you want to be doing, but um, so yeah, no, I'd, I'd want to have a water maker on board if I was going to be uh, sailing around the world. It's it, like to me, it's just a requirement, you know. Um, so before I, I'm, you know, if I'm sailing around a coast or something like that, sure, um, I'm okay with. Uh, like if I'm sailing around a coast on like West Coast Canada or <laughs> or something, you know, yeah, okay, whatever, you know, worst case scenario. I can hop onto land, there's a cell phone tower, I can like, call up a taxi and, and uh, you know, be like, hey, can I, uh, can I get a ride by the way, could you bring up like a few bottles of water or something like that, like I haven't drank in a, in a day, you know, like, not that bad, right, like, not, not desirable, but, not that bad, right, um, and then, uh, oh, we're, we don't have a, Another weapon, hey? Oh shoot, I thought we had a Glock, so I was, I was blowing my ammo. Uh oh. <laughs> Let's go hoover up some some munitions here. Uh, should be okay with uh, with one more this is a giant ammo crate. Or else with some reasonably accurate shots. Anyway. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So yeah, um... You know, I'd, I'd be kind of coasting around uh, West Coast Canada anyway for the first bit of owning a boat and living on a boat just to kind of get used to it and acquainted with the whole process. Um, so I wouldn't need to have a water maker on the boat that I buy, but I would have to, like, buy one and install it before I go out on a, you know, an ocean voyage or something, you know, like a long passage. Um, something like that, right? Like, that would be uh, definitely a... Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> anyway, um, so water maker is necessary for me, so that's going to use up electricity as well. They don't have to run it all the time. It's not like it's always running. You wouldn't be able to get the electricity for that anyway from solar. Um, but you know, you also have to worry about that. Like it's, it's power is limited on a boat, right? Like you only have so much of it. You don't, you don't just have like a, an entire city's grid to pull power from. Like you have what your boat generates. That's it. Um, probably have a generator as well on board, a diesel generator. Um, wouldn't really want to be running that for... Um, like, running my KF2 videos, though. But it could uh, it could be used for if I need um, something in an emergency or whatever, for sure. But, uh, you know, like, again, it's, that's, not, that's not really for, like, the comfort stuff. That's for the, like, oh, God, we need this thing on right now because uh, we need... Um, you know, whatever, uh, running currently, immediately, and, um, you know, like our, uh, um, nav stuff, right, like that takes electricity as well, not much, but, um, it'll, it'll take some electricity for sure, and, um, you gotta make sure that you have your, uh, your power for that as well, and, uh, what else would you use, like, a diesel generator for on a boat? I don't actually know. Heat, maybe? Um, might have, like, electric motors or something like that. Uh, I don't I don't really know. I don't really know. I'm not an expert on boats yet. Will be someday. Get, get back, you know, uh, come back in a few years and I'll, I'll be, uh, I'll be, uh, I'll be a proper knowledgeable individual when it comes to, to sailboats. But for right now, I'm not there, so... We'll have to take our time and get there. Um, 
So, you know, anyway, the, the electricity is limited, so... It is the moral of the story, so... It'll be probably shorter episodes. It's just like, it's it's things you have to kind of think about when you're when you're thinking about getting a, a boat, right? Or, or rather, when you're thinking about making any kind of big lifestyle change like this, you have to think about your current lifestyle and how you're going to kind of... Like, what kind of sacrifices you'll have to make, what kind of sacrifices you're okay with making, and what you're not okay with making, and... Um, you know, like, how exactly are you going to, to, to change to accommodate these? And what are you going to give up? And what are you going to keep? And, um, you know, all these things. And so you can kind of logically and soundly and educationally, you know, make, make an educated, I guess, um, decision on whether or not this, this commitment is worth it to you. Um, so I've been kind of laying out all the, the bits of stuff that I'd have to give up and, um... Things I'd be able to, to afford and, and what I wouldn't be able to afford and, and uh, you know, the process and all that. And I think it's worth it to me, so I think I'm going to do it. Um, like, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to do it. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that, I don't know, two, maybe three years from now, um, I'm, you know, on a boat. Like, two years from today, I want to be on a boat with no permanent, you know, like, house, so to speak. Like, my, my boat would be my home, but, um, like, I want to, I want to be on, the, I want to be in a boat in two years. That's, that's, like, the decision that I've made. And I don't know if it'll work in two years. It might take, like, three or four or whatever. It's okay. But I'm going to work towards it. Um, because I've, I've made the decision that this is 100% something I want to do. I I don't think I'm going to be able to, you know, like 40 years from now, if I don't go out sailing around the world, I don't think I'll be able to look back on my life and be like, yeah, I, li I lived a, a fulfilling, happy life, you know? I, I don't think I'll be able to do that. So, and I want to be able to. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna sail around the world. It's the decision I made. And I don't think I'm getting swept up in the excitement or the fads. Honestly, I don't know if I talked about it in this one yet or in the previous one. Like, I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot because I am. Um, but looking at, at sailing videos and, like, people talking about sailing on the internet and stuff, there's a common theme. People whose job it is to get people to watch them sail, like, uh, you know, sailing YouTubers, paint it in a much more positive light than I think it really is and people who do it just for fun as a passion and, and they don't uh, use it as income um, or at least they're talking under a different um, you know sort of if, if it's not like on their YouTube channel you know what I mean um, then, then they'll paint it in a much more negative light than I think it really is so I think it's somewhere in the middle because a lot of the time like um you know, if you look at all these sailing channels, and there's tons of them out there, what happens often is, like, a lot of the the videos are just, like, girls in bikinis on beaches and stuff. And it's like, I don't know. It, it, it just feels like they're painting a, a very idealistic picture of, uh, of of what sailing is like. And then, and then you talk to people on the internet about it and they're like oh well you know you just never get a break from from all the boat maintenance it's all just it's all just boat maintenance all the time you just you can't get away from it it's you know sailing is just uh boat maintenance and exotic places and blah 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 you know and it's like i don't know i, I feel like both of them are kind of over exaggerating their points um you know like the sailing YouTube channels are making it, are hiding all of the boring stuff because they want to, to get viewers and subscriptions and patrons and all this kind of stuff to be able to afford their lifestyle. And, uh, you know, the people on the internet aren't relying on those people and they don't want, you know, random, you know, bandwagoners ending up, uh, you know, making a, a huge life decision based on, uh, on on incorrect information, and so they, they end up over exaggerating how hard it is to, to live on a boat. Um, I think the the reality of it is somewhere kind of in the middle. 
So I, I don't think, and I don't know, like, I'm gonna, like, one way or the other, I am going to go on a boat and sail for a while. I'm going to get hands-on experience before I actually buy a boat and uh, and live on a boat. I'm, I'm going to, to properly, you know, learn and, and, and take classes and, and see how it all goes, and then I'm gonna actually, you know, you know, probably, like, get some hands-on training and stuff, like, actually go out on a sailboat and actually sail around somewhere and actually do it and get the, the experience hands-on and see how it actually goes and what it's actually like. Head sneeze. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, before I make any huge decisions, huge commitments, um, you know, that's, that's, that's step one, basically, well, step two, really, but, um, it's, 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 it's pretty high on the list of things to do, right? Um, but, having not done that, the kind of idea I'm getting from sailing is that, uh, it actually is, and, and again, this, this is just my understanding from kind of piecing together information from all the different sources that I've seen, is that, uh, it kind of is pretty easy it seems um, and stuff doesn't go too terribly wrong too often um, so you know I want to kind of explain that I guess a little bit so what, I, what I'm thinking is like you're gonna have to do boat maintenance like pretty much daily but I, I feel like what most of it is going to be is, like, preventative boat maintenance. You know, like, routine stuff that you just do, like, you know, like, Monday boat work, you know? Um, so, it's not really like, like, every day your sails ripping and your motors are falling apart and, you know, your props have uh, got stuff stuck in it and... You have to go out there and, you know, dive around in the, the murky waters. And, um, you know, like, you got holes in the boat just all the time. And it's just, you can't get away from the boat. Like, no. I, I feel like what's going to end up happening is, you know, like, every day you're going to be looking at your boat and being like, ah, you know, this feels a little bit funky. Let's just kind of, like, tighten that up and get that, uh, you know, feeling a little bit better. And then you go and do it. You spend a few minutes here and there on a bunch of things. And um, then your boat's fine. You know, and then every now and then... You know, and, and often, definitely often, um, you're going to have um, more serious stuff as well. Like, you're going to have sails ripping and you're going to have to repair them. You're going to have leaks. Your engine is going to have problems. Your props are going to get stuff stuck in them. And you're going to have to swim around in murky waters. But, like, honestly, most of the time, it's not going to be that murky. And um, it's not going to be that bad. Um... But, you know, like, like, bad stuff is going to happen on occasion, but, like, the really bad stuff probably just doesn't really happen that often. It's, it's probably, like, my my estimation of what sailing is like is, is probably that you kind of just have, like, a lot of stuff just kind of slowly wearing down that you kind of just have to keep on, like, keeping an eye on, checking on, and, uh, you know, cleaning, um... And uh, just kind of doing some some general preventative maintenance on on your boat, so to make sure that the really bad stuff doesn't happen too often. Um, so for a lot of your sailing life, you're gonna be living a pretty relaxed, chill life, and you're gonna have time to go and explore the places that you stop off at and uh, do all this kind of stuff. But you're also going to have to buy, you know, parts and and. Uh, you know, take piece things apart and and piece them all back together and all this kind of stuff. And that's also going to happen. But it feels like the 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 YouTube channels they make it seem like it doesn't happen. And um, the YouTube channels make it seem like it doesn't happen. And then when you're reading on the internet, it may, people make it seem like you'll never have time to do anything. And I'm like, the reality is probably in the middle. You know, it's probably just smack dab in the middle. Because the way I see it is people leave their boats for months at a time over the winter, you know? Like, slap a tarp on it, 
leave it over the winter for like a few months, come back to it when you haven't even seen it, and it's still in reasonable shape. Might have a little bit to do, but like you're still pretty good. And obviously the boat wasn't moving, there's going to be more wear on it when it's moving, but it's like two months, dude. You know? And you come back and there's just like a, a few things to do here and there, get it cleaned out and make sure everything's still in proper working order and blah 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 blah, right? And, yeah, you know, it's not moving, you're in pretty still waters, you're in a pretty safe area. Um, sure. Okay. But, have you ever thought about how, like, it's, you know, also just been left there alone for a few months and it's, like, pretty much fine? Like, I, I feel like boats are made to handle the waters reasonably well. You know, like, they're, they're probably built to handle it, right? So, stuff probably goes pretty well, generally speaking, most of the time. Um, you know? I don't know. I don't want to, I don't want to paint it in an idealistic way, but I also don't want to, like, I guess what I'm saying is, is there there just doesn't really seem to be like an accurate source of what being on a boat is like, except for just going and doing it. You, you can't know what it's going to be like, because you can't trust anybody, because everybody's trying to trick you. The YouTubers are trying to trick you into thinking that it's some kind of picturesque, ideal journey to, to find yourself kind of thing, and nothing goes wrong, and it's just all the time being on a beach, half naked, and just enjoying yourself, right? Not true. Um, and then, you know, you talk to people on the internet and they're trying to convince you that it's just like a really tough thing and it's just always boat maintenance and don't believe these YouTubers and blah, 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 blah. Also, not true. Or else you wouldn't be doing it. You know, like... It just, um... Like, you wouldn't have the time to, like... Deliver stuff to places if, if, if it were always just everything breaking. You know what I mean? Like, you just, you wouldn't, it wouldn't be a viable method of transport. It, like, if, if stuff was always breaking and you never had time to do anything other than fix your boat, you, it wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to move it, okay? I guess is what I'm saying, okay? So, yeah, sure, you can have maintenance and stuff to do. And then you move it for a bit, and then you break some stuff, and then you fix it again, and you're anchored for a bit, and your boat's, like, pretty okay, and... You know, you, you fix up whatever's not okay and kind of enjoy yourself here and then, you know, you're fixed and ready to go again and you go out and go do something else and, you know, your boat breaks again and now you fix it and you kind of repeat this whole process over and over again. I think that's kind of what's going to end up happening when I live on a boat. You know, like, obviously some stuff will have to get fixed on the fly. If your sail rips, you have to fix it. Doesn't matter really where you are unless you have, like, a spare sail and you probably do, but, you know, like, you're still going to fix it because <laughs> you want to have another spare sail. Um, so it's just, uh, yeah, I, I, I feel like it's, it's neither the, the picturesque journey that, uh, that a lot of these YouTube channels make it out to be, and I feel like it's also not this just dreaded, always, you know, hard and everything's going wrong kind of disaster that, uh, you know, people will try to tell you that it is, so. Um, but I put together a plan. Um, <clears throat> I put together a plan, so what I'm going to do is, first up, the, the first step on the plan is for me to lose weight and get into somewhat better shape. Um, I said it before, being on a boat, you're going to lose weight. It's going to be an active lifestyle. You can live an overweight life on a boat. You can't live like a fat life on a boat. You know what I mean? Like, that's not doable. There's just, there's just too much activity on a boat for you to be, like, obese, you know? Um, and uh, I would rather... I'm not, like... I'm under 300 pounds, you know? Like, like I'm not huge, but I'm, I'm, I'm heavier than would be, like, comfortable doing that kind of, like, lab laborious work. So I'm going to lose some weight, get a little bit healthier, a little bit more fit. And then hopefully, like, this summer... Um, I'll be able to 
get some training on a boat and uh, like take some classes on uh, on sailing and uh, learn you know the ins and outs of it all and, and kind of get some hands-on experience with with what's going to be happening and and uh, what it's like and you know really properly solidify my decision to to, to live on a boat um, and uh, I think my decision isn't going to change when when uh, when I do that I think I will still after having you know gotten that experience and lived on the boat I think I will still be deciding that I want to go and live on a boat because it just it just seems so good to me um, so gonna be probably sticking with it but uh, you know that's that's the next step is to take whatever classes I need to feel confident enough to, to own a boat and live on a boat in a, in a coast just around here um, and then uh, after that, I'll see about um, maybe like buying a boat or financing a boat, maybe, and uh, living out at like um, various free anchorages around here. There's lots of them around here. We got uh, what is it? Uh, Vancouver Island. What is it? Da, da, da. There's like a I forget what it's called. What this um like it's a strait I think or something. Yeah, strait. It's the Strait of Georgia. Um, just between. I guess I can show you. Does this show my house? If I go in, does it show my house? No, it doesn't. Good. That's good. I don't want it to show my house. Uh, so we'll switch over here. Mm, is this all good? Yeah. So this like whole strait here is uh, pretty chill water, generally speaking. Like you kind of get a lot of protection from the open Pacific Ocean over here. Um. Just in this little area here, I live uh, down at the tip down here-ish, and um, there's like a bunch of them. Let's see if I can find it. Anchorages, Vancouver Island. There's a ton of them. Tons and tons and tons and tons of them. Ah. Uh, There was a website I found, I can't remember. West Coast BC Anchorages. This? Because mm. there, there was a, I found this one thing. West Coast Canada Anchorages. Is this it? There's a thing that had like a website that showed all the, like a map that showed all the anchorages. Mm. Anchorages map. Uh, I know I had it, but I can't. I don't know my phone. I can't find it. See if it's still up on my phone, maybe. Ah, totally is. Okay, we'll go to this website. Coastal BC Anchorages. I didn't look at it very closely. Um, so I don't know if it's like free anchorages or whatever, but um, we'll take a peek. Um... Location of safe anchorages in coastal British Columbia, which is exactly what we want. So that's kind of like all 
this sort of area here. Dunka dunka. Uh, if we zoom in, the anchorages start popping up. These are all the safe anchorages around here. So again, I live down here-ish. Um, there's anchorages down here, tons of them up there, lots of them all over here. So I could pretty much just kind of like travel up and down the island, stopping at all of these various anchorages along the way and, and kind of exploring uh, BC through the water. Um, like just tons and tons of anchorages all over the place here, right? Like I could, I could just fly through uh, BC here and uh, and uh, enjoy all these anchorages. Probably some out on the uh, west side as well. Yeah, lots and lots of anchorages west uh, west coast Vancouver Island here. Um, so you know that's that's like where I'd be living, right? Those would be uh, like that. That that'd be like home for me. All of all of those green dots would be uh, places I could go live. You know, just like one day, I I could just wake up. You know, if I if I were living on a boat right now, if I were living on um on like like you know a year, two years from now, whatever, when I when I end up uh, owning a boat, I could wake up tomorrow and be like, you know what, let's go to that green dot, and I just go there, set anchor. And uh, you know, set anchor, drop anchor, whatever it is, the, the terminology. I haven't like gone to boating class, okay? I don't know like terms and stuff, okay? Um, and uh, you know, call that my home for however long I want to, basically. You know, assuming uh, provisions last, and uh, or that I have provisions uh, available to me uh, nearby. Um, it would be uh, just basically as long as I want, and you know, worst case scenario, I run out of provisions. I can like I can just go to a different green dot that has provisions nearby and pick up some some food and water or whatever else I need, right? So, yeah, like that's that's the part that excites me about sailing. That's it, right? Like, just let's let's go back to this map again because this this is really the the part that really excites me. Okay, so I live. Like down here-ish, right? So we'd be, I'd be starting out on one of these dots, right? Let's say I start out on like the the, the southernmost like tip, south southeasternmost tip, right here, right at the border of Canada and the United States. Just make sure you don't cross. Um, I'm pretty sure legally I wouldn't be in trouble if I crossed until I like went over here and got off my boat. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure that legally you can cross the border. Uh, in a boat, you just can't land. I'm I'm pretty sure. I don't I don't know the laws. Don't don't don't. Uh, I'm I'm not giving you legal advice here. Okay. I'm just saying my understanding of it. I'm pretty sure is that uh, you aren't welcomed uh, at the at a place to land. So the moment you like land, that's when you've committed to to being there. So if I if I just accidentally cross the border for a bit, I'm pretty sure worst case scenario is um I cross back. And and this is also like a big distance. That's not that's not short. <laughs> you know? That's 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 a very, very, very long way. Um I'd be staying closer to the coast really. I don't know I don't know exactly the um line that I'd be taking. But let's say I start here, right? So I, I get off a boat, you know, somewhere over here ish. You know. Yeah. And um then I bring it down here to, to the starting point, right? I got my provisions, I got everything I need. I start here. I stay here for as long as I want. And then one day I wake up and I'm like, you know what? Let's go here. Now I go here. Now I'm here. Then I'm there. That's it. You know, there's no commitment to this green dot. I don't have to stay at that one if I want if I don't want to. You know what I mean? Like like I can just boop. Now I'm over here. And then I stay here for as long as I want. And then one day I'm like, you know what? Let's uh let's go to that green dot. Let's go to the what is that, Calboro Bay? Cad Cadboro Bay? Yeah. Go go down here. Now I'm here. Stay there as long as I want. One day I'd be like, you know, let's go up, uh, let's go up over here. And then I'm there. It's that that's the that's the thing that just like That's the thing that's so appealing to me about sailing. And and having this boat and, and like living aboard and, and that kind of lifestyle is just like I start I start down here 
And then I just decide I want to be over here now. And I just go do it. I don't have to, like, you know, find a, a hotel and then, like, pay for the hotel and, you know, get a new phone service or, like, whatever, you know? Like, like I just, I literally just wake up and I'm like, you know what? I've had enough fun in this little, I don't know, is this a bay? Yeah, it's a bay. Um, I've had enough fun in this bay. Let's go to this cove. You know, let's go explore this cove. Maybe let's go explore, like, this little area. Walk around these islands a little bit. Who knows what's on them? I've never been there. But I can go there. If I have a boat, I can just go there. And then, you know, when I get bored of it, I can just, I can go up here. To this island. What, 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 what's Darcy Island? What's on there? I don't know. But I could just go there and find it and see it and, like... And then when I'm bored of this, I can go up here. You know, now I'm now I'm up over here on Gooch Island. I didn't even know Gooch Island was a place, but now I do. And if I had a boat, I could just go there and then live there. I don't have to like find a house and like buy. I just move my house there and then I'm just there. You know what I mean? Like, I hope I hope I did a good job of sharing what makes me so incredibly excited uh, about that kind of lifestyle it, it, it's just so free you know like if I don't want to be where I am I just go somewhere else and even if you're like it seems I must you know, even if I'm not crossing the Pacific Ocean and even if I'm not crossing uh, you know the Atlantic Ocean or if I'm not like you know traveling around the Caribbean or or whatever there's still tons to explore just like you know, uh, right around where I am. Shall I go slowly? And give you a chat. Uh, I can't kill what I can't see. Like <laughs> it just I, I I need it. I need that. You know? I really, 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 really need that. I I, I won't be able to, to say I lived a fulfilling life with without having that, I don't think. Without, without being able to experience that kind of freedom, that kind of just completely unattached from 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 the, the world as you can be, basically. Just, I don't want to be here anymore. I'll just pick up, move my house, literally somewhere else, anywhere I want. You know, just, just literally wake up one day and be like, I don't want to be here anymore. I'm going to go there. You know, and assuming the boat's in, you know, ship shape or whatever. I can literally wake up and just be like, yeah, I'm going to go over there now. I'm bored of this place. Let's go there. I mean, I wouldn't be bored of it, but I'd be like excited for a different place, you know? And I'd be like, yeah, I'm going to go there. Just literally wake up and go. You know? You know, wake up and like prepare and, you know, get set up and like, you know, plan for like when the wind's going to be good and... You know, like, all, all the stuff that you have to do to make it, like, safe and whatnot. But, like, you know, I could just wake up and go, okay? I, I, I could just decide I want to go there and just go there. I don't, I don't like, the, and, and, like, what, what I have to concern myself with isn't, like, you know, oh, it's a bad year for it. Oh, it's, like, you know, a little out of the way. It's a little hard to drive to. No, you just drive your boat there. And then you're just there. Like, how is that not so unbelievably exciting and cool? So anyway, yeah, my plan is to um, to buy the boat after I after I get some lessons, and then live on it for I don't know a year, two, or something like that to to maybe pay off you know the payment plan that I have on the boat or something. Um, get used to living on a boat. Uh, have a few people on board, sail around the island a little bit. Um, just just get really familiar with uh, with living on this boat and uh, like the ins and outs of it and like repairing all the stuff that happens and like get really familiar with it and like comfortable you know because all of these courses and lessons and training and everything that you can do you're not really like you can be capable right but you're not going to be comfortable until you've done it you know even like this hands-on experience you're going to have somebody else there right it's, it's going to be a scary experience when, when you first do something by yourself and you're first like going and doing something 
you know with with just you and and one other person maybe or something you know like that's that's going to be a terrifying experience it's it's going to be very very scary and uh until you actually do it and try it and get comfortable with it it's going to continue to be scary but at a certain point you're going to be able to have had enough experience doing it then you'll be able to look at it and be like yeah no that's just like it's just a thing you know it's just a thing and to me it's worth it so i'll do i'll do scrake in in the in the zone happily yeah give me more scrakes so i can complete it dude um so yeah no like uh my my plan is to uh, I don't know I, I'll I'll see how safe it is to to actually live on uh, on a boat by myself. Let's just weld this a little bit so that we have uh, a warning before the scrakes come and slaughter us. Um, while we were handling the other scrakes anyway. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah anyway, I'm, I'm keep getting distracted. I will um, you know, do all the training and all that by a boat, see how safe it is and, and reasonable to, to live by myself without anybody because I don't currently have anybody who I could live on a boat with. You can you can live on a boat by yourself. Um, at first, like I talked about the other day, I said it wouldn't be worth it. I, I've After doing the research on it and like looking at it, I, I've changed my stance on that. Um, my my risk level that I would accept for um, for going on a boat is a little bit higher now, but I'll have to again get the experience and hands on and, and really know how dangerous it is to, to live on a boat by yourself um, before I make a, a proper solid decision on that. Um, but I could see myself living on a boat by myself. I don't think it's that dangerous, um, but I, I would rather have somebody else, at least one other person. Um, just like you know, if you get injured, like somebody else can help you, you know. Like, it's super important to have at least one other person, right? Um, so, yeah, no, like, in the in the, uh, in the you know, year or two, whatever, that I'd be kind of coasting around um, the island, around uh, kind of West Coast BC, uh, I would be meeting people, for sure. Um, like, going out of my way to meet new people and, and make new friends and stuff. Um, I'd be contacting some of my old friends and... See if anybody wants to come and join me. You know, like see if anybody wants to to, to come and hop onto the boat with me and cruise cruise around uh, the island a little bit. You know, go on a, a two week, you know, journey around uh, Vancouver Island or something like that. Um, little vacation for people, just kind of like free of charge. Just pay for your own food and stuff. Um, just so I can have somebody else on board and, and have some fun and um, maybe possibly end up meeting somebody that like you know on board we just really get along well and click and stuff like it, it like the main purpose is to just have somebody else on board it's like the main reason i'd be inviting somebody else on just because like otherwise you're in isolation you know and i'm okay in isolation it's not really a healthy thing no um so you know you want you want to have other people at least one other person, if for no other reason than your personal sanity. Um, at least I would, anyway. Um, so that's like the main reason I'd have people on. Not necessarily romance. Um, but, kind of a side effect of that is that I would have a, uh, a much greater chance of like, ending up in a romantic relationship with somebody who would be interested in like, living on a boat. You know what I mean? Um, so maybe end up, uh, you know, from that, find somebody who would want to get together and, and, like, live on the boat and travel around the world and stuff. And then once I'm comfortable, um, you know, go and do that. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's, it's going to happen. I, I, ha I, 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 I've decided that uh, it will happen. Um, I will, I will do what I have to to make it work. Um, whatever that is, you know, um, and, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna make it work. So I'm hoping 
two, maybe three years from now, I'm living on a sailboat. And uh, I'm hoping maybe a few years after that, I'll be like sailing around the world with uh, with somebody I love, you know? Like that's that's the future that I want in my life. I've been kind of, for a while, I've, I've kind of been, I love YouTube as well. Um, sailing doesn't necessarily prohibit me from making YouTube videos. In fact, I think it would be even better for YouTube videos because I'd be able to make sailing vlogs, which would be like, I don't know, people would probably like that. <laughs> it's kind of like the same kind of content I'm making now, except my life's more exciting. So, you know, that's fun. Um, Got some ammo here. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, it'd be, it'd be really, really cool. And I'm going to be doing it, so hopefully I can make it work. Um, yeah, anyway, yeah, so yeah, 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 no, like, I've been kind of just not really sure of what I want in my life. Like, I don't know, like, YouTube and some privacy and a little home and kind of live uh, a little isolated and, and uh, um, just kind of focus on, on me. And then, you know, hey, by the way, sailing is exactly that. So, it's, uh, it's it's 100% what I need in my life, without without a question. It's uh, it, it's what I need, for sure. So I'm gonna I'm gonna work on it. Hopefully, hopefully again, like uh, a few years from now, I will be uh, sailing around the coast of uh, the west coast of Canada. At least um, the west coast of BC, a little bit north, northern than that is um, I don't know is is. Well, the north, the so you got so you got BC, the north coast, the, the west coast of uh, of BC, the west coast of Canada that's northern than that is like the Arctic. <laughs> so, not really interested in that yet. Maybe someday, you know. I'm not gonna say never, um, but that's that's more of a, an experienced sailor kind of uh, thing to do, you know. Not really a, uh, yeah, I haven't learned how to sail before, but I bought a boat, and I'm just kind of learning on the job. Not really, not, the Arctic isn't really a place where you go and do that, you know? It's not really that great for, <laughs> for, for, <laughs> uh, beginners, you know? So, uh, west coast of, uh, BC, anyway. And, um, you know, a little, a little while after that, maybe around the world. Maybe one day uh, turn it into a, a riverboat and start traveling the rivers of, uh, of various continents and explore them and, and uh, have some fun that way. Like I was watching uh, Sailing Magic Carpet, who turned their sailboat into a, a riverboat. They just basically pulled the mast down. And, uh, yeah, they, they've been sailing through Europe. I think they're, like, done now, but I haven't got caught up yet. Um... Just sailing through Europe, exploring it, and it's just, it's just, like, it's so cool. You know? Like, I just, I, I... I need it. I, I need it. You know? And, uh... I'm, I'm gonna do it. 100%. It's expensive, though. Um, you know, like, living on the boat itself is, is affordable. The boat's... Like, so living on a boat, very inexpensive. Like, for, for the costs you have to pay just to to, to, to be able to, to live on the boat and, like, not die while you're on a boat that you own. The the whole owning a boat part is, is rather expensive. Like, you have to have boat insurance, which is, I don't know, it's like 10 or 15% or something like of, of the boat's value per year or something. Um, you gotta have, uh, you know... Some money put away for the the boat maintenance, which is I, I believe some people like people recommend like 15% to the boat's value uh, per year on uh, on like boat maintenance stuff. Um, and then uh, you also gotta own the boat, which is 100% of the boat's value per purchase, and uh, <laughs> that's that's the hard part for sure. Um, that's that's definitely the the hard part. So we'll have to I'll have to figure out how I'm gonna afford it, like the actual boat. Like I can afford to live, okay? If you like, you know, show up at my door and you're like, hey, you want a boat? It's free. I'll be like, yeah, and then I'll go and live on the boat. Um, but it, it, you know, having to go and shop for a boat and then buy a boat and it's like, I don't know, let's 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 go take a peek right now. 
Um, so I'd probably want like a 30 foot um, sailboat, Canada, for sale. Looking for probably something like my, I'd want something a little bit newer, like 2000, 2005 probably. Um, the older the boat, the more stuff you're going to have. Like this is a um, 1975 30 foot sailboat Grampian for 15 and a half thousand. Not bad. It's affordable. 1975 is old. There's going to be a lot of repairs and a lot of maintenance to do on that, right? Um, I guess I can show you this, right? That's this one right here. So, you know, nice boat, decent size, nice interior, all this kind of stuff. Affordable price. It's literally 46 years old. Like, you got, you got problems with that, right? Um, 1968, renting, um... Like just just finding a boat in the first place. Like this one's 1978 again, um, not so great. Uh, racing, not really what I'm after. Comfortable cruising boat, but no price. Um, this is a bit of a newer boat, I believe, though. I think. Um, 1979 again, like no price. 30 foot, 22,000. Um, like, how old is it? With that price, probably like 19, yes, 1970s, right? Like, it's just, it's just, it's expensive um, for, for a boat that is not super old. Like, all of these boats that are like within my price range, 1978, 44,000. We're starting to get up like a little outside of my price range. We're only at 1981. You know, like, A big yikes. Um, sailboat. We'll, we'll we'll get rid of the the. We'll just kind of look for sailboats in boats watercraft. Just kind of any boat that we can find. Um, these are all. We'll, we're looking for cash from like fifteen thousand and up. Okay. I don't want to see all these little tiny things. Looking for something that's actually like reasonable. Okay. 1989 for 34, 2,000, 105,000. You see what I mean? Like these are, this is sort of like around the time that I'd want to start buying one. A little bit older, a little, a little bit newer, a little bit more expensive. Um, if we look for like the year, sailboat, 2,000, um, 150,000, um, $2,000 for the dinghy. So this is not. Um, 84,000, probably actually from like around 2000. If you look for like 2005, the prices are going to go up probably. Um, yeah, just anyway, 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 enough of this. Um, so the, the newer the boat, the more expensive the, uh, the boat, obviously, right? Like it, it goes with anything, right? Um, but you don't, you don't want to buy, like it, it, it's your house, right? And it's very prone to like sinking and damages and you know all this kind of stuff right so the older the boat the more you're gonna have to do like refits and and um repairs and maintenance and all this kind of stuff right the ideal would be to go buy like a new boat that was made you know this year or last year or something you know but they're like a million two million dollars good luck it, it's well outside my budget i i could get a mortgage on it <laughs> The mortgage is also well outside my budget, so it's just um yeah I don't know like, again and 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 the the whole like purchasing a boat thing is gonna have to come again like like really making a decision about what the budget's gonna be like is gonna have to come after I have experience with being on a boat and I know kind of like what I'm getting into and and like you know have have more experience with you know, what kinds of repairs are there going to be? What kinds of things am I going to have to keep an eye out for? Um, after I talk to some people and, you know, make some connections and friends and stuff in the sailing communities and whatnot. And kind of kind of get a little bit more experience in that sort of right? And, uh, and figure out more about what I'm doing so I can make a proper educated decision. But, like, just kind of looking at it right now... Um, 
like 2000 is probably the 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 latest I'd want to go or the the, the oldest I'd want to go, and and a 2000 boat is is like a, a boat from the year 2000 is typically around about like 100,000 or so, like a, a 30 to 40 foot ish sailboat is typically around that price. Um, so yeah, it's definitely uh, <laughs> it's, it's not cheap to buy the boat, so I'd probably be on like a payment plan or a loan from a bank or something like that, right? Um, if I'd be approved or whatever, so like there, there's just um, a lot to, to be worried about, for sure. Um, but, you know. It's, uh, it's what I want to do. So. I'll get a bit of money after I sell my computer and uh, sell my car and all this kind of stuff as well, right? But yep, I've been I've been doing a lot of research into it for sure. Um, I just like like I, I would like I was showing you the the anchorages around here. It's like how how is it not exciting to to think about like living in there? Oh, because like you don't really like the ocean and you like having a stable place to come back to to call home. Okay, sure. I don't care about either of those, you know? So, it's just, it's just so exciting. There's also, like, other types of sailboats, too. I don't know if I talked about it in this recording or the previous one, but... Um, you got the, the sailboats that we were looking at there, which are monohulls. Um, and then you also have, like, the tamarans. I think there's, like, trimaram, tr trima tr trima trimarans or something like that, with, like, triple hulls, but... You're, you're, you're really, really deciding between a monohull or a, or a catamaran. A uh, catamaran is, uh, is like two boats, basically, strapped together. Um, with, uh, with some bits in the middle to, to hold them together and add a spot to, um, to stand. Um, so you get a lot more space, but the, you know, the boats are more expensive because they're just physically larger. Um, if you are going to be docking in a marina or, or a harbor or something, um, more expensive to do that because they're bigger. Um, you have more repairs to do because there's more boat to repair, more maintenance, more things breaking. Um, just, just more work overall, right? I think it would be a better boat for sure for for me personally and the way that I want to live. Um, but not 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 enough of a difference to where I'd be like, yeah, definitely that. You know what I mean? Like it would be a. Uh, it, it it would be nicer. It'd be a, it'd be a luxury, but I'd I'd be willing to 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 take a little bit less so I could get something more affordable, um, and just have a boat that I can go live on, out in the uh, in the ocean. And it's just it's just like I've been I've been fantasizing about it, right? When I get excited about something like this, I, I fantasize a lot. I daydream, and uh, one of the things that I've been fantasizing about is uh, when I eventually own the boat. And I get to, to go out sailing, right? So I'm, I'm operating on the assumption that I'm probably going to be living alone on the boat for uh, for a lot of the time. Um, and then I've I've I've, I've did, like it's it's just been a fantasy of mine, okay? Um, and and fantasies aren't always realistic, okay? Okay, we we got that out of un, un, uh, under control there. Um, so one what it, what it, what it is 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 when I own the boat and I want to find somebody to like, you know come in and, uh, and live with me for a bit to keep me company and maybe uh, have some fun traveling around uh, BC and, and exploring and stuff just to have fun, you know? Um, just, just like being one of those people, you know, who are just like, like, like advertisements, you know, like those cheeky advertisements, like, um, just, just like making posts on like Facebook or something like that. Like anybody want to go sailing, you know? Just being one of those cheeky people, I think it'd be fun. Um, and and then you know, getting a bunch of responses and being like the cool person, which uh, again wouldn't happen because most people would be like, not really, no. <laughs> but probably somebody, right? Probably somebody would want to go, and uh, I'd probably end up uh, like finding friends and stuff like that to, to come and join me on my trip around uh, BC as we sail. Somebody who might want to learn or something like that. Not necessarily a learner, like not necessarily. Well, I wouldn't want to make, like, my boat be, like, a place where people go to learn how to sail a boat. I would want to make it a place where my friends come to go sailing, and then while they're there, they, like, pick up stuff about how to sail. You know what I mean? 
Um, like that's just that just sounds like such a, an enjoyable life to me. And then you know eventually, I think I talked about it, but eventually you know ends up uh, you know maybe maybe one person just keeps coming back, and then eventually he stops leaving. Maybe be nice, but we'll see how it goes. Um, I don't think it's totally unlikely. You know, like I, I, I think that a lot of um, the relationships on uh, on sailboats kind of start out like that, right? Like just kind of people who happened to go sailing, and then they just kept sailing, and then they just kind of like stopped not going sailing together. Um, so I think I think it's I think it's likely, but it's not really the end goal of, uh, of having people onto the boat. The end goal of having people onto the boat is just because like. I want to enjoy it with other people. Um, it would be a little awkward with a smaller boat, because like a, a 30 foot sailboat, you get a uh, you don't you don't get a lot of space. <laughs> um, so you got you know your your toilet, perhaps. I would I would need a toilet. Um, you get a toilet. Um, might not necessarily have the toilet like away from. Site. You might not necessarily have like a door on your toilet, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, and uh, you won't you won't have two bedrooms. You're definitely not gonna have two bedrooms, like two cabins, two proper cabins. Um, you, you'll you'll have one, and then like a living room that can be converted into uh, a bed with on like a, a sofa or something on a, on a couch. That, that turns into a bed, you lay out a mattress or something, you know? Tomatoes. That's um, so people who aren't in a romantic relationship would find it a little bit close, <laughs> for sure. Um, but that's that's just sailing, right? Like, that's that's what being on a boat is. You, got, you only got so much space, you're going to be stuck together, so. Um, but I think it'd be fun. I, I think it'd be so fun. So, 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 so fun. And, uh, the more I talk about it, the more I'm like, yeah, no, I need to, like, do this. You know what I mean? Like, I need to. It must happen. It must. There is no avoiding it. So, definitely, uh, I'm hoping, yeah, this summer I get to go maybe do some training and learning and stuff. Um, and then, uh, next year or the year after, maybe buy a boat. And uh, hopefully pay it off in a few years, and then start uh, cruising around the world. Maybe, uh, maybe in the time I'm cruising around BC, I, I end up picking up a bit of an audience, um, enough to make uh, a little bit of bonus cash. Because the thing is, is my income is tied to me being in BC. That's why I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll cruise around BC. Um, I'm on disability. Um, my disability is is uh, like more or less anxiety um, so I can I can own a boat and travel and stuff uh, I can't have like like I, I can't have like a full-time job even though sailing is like a full-time job if it, like the moment it becomes a job it's just like I'll end up being late and I won't like I won't be able to handle it I just I won't be there um, anyway um, so I'm on disability, and if I'm not living in BC, I don't get my disability money. That's bad, right? That's really bad, of course. Um, so before I leave BC, I have to have money, income, you know, one of the two. I either have to have money saved up to be able to afford to go on a trip, um, and then hopefully I still have disability when I come back, or else I'm kind of um, screwed. <laughs> Uh, or I have to have some sorts of income, and I'm hoping that maybe YouTube vlogs would take off, you know, sailing around BC. Um, I would like to, uh, to have a channel where I, I talk more about the, the nitty-gritty of, uh, of being on a boat, you know? Because a lot of these channels, again, like, kind of paint this picturesque version of, uh, of, of sailing that I just don't think is totally accurate. And then a lot of people try to scare people away from making a bad decision, which again I don't really think is totally accurate. So I'd love to be able to to kind of record everything that happens and and put it together so that people who are interested, kind of like the position that I'm in right now, uh, have a resource to uh, to go and see 
what it's like from from like the start of like I want to go sailing. I have never sailed before. I have literally no money. How do I like make this work? To I live on a boat, and I'm sailing around the world, and um, you know what what it's like, and the whole process. You know, because like that that kind of thing isn't out there. Like all these channels that are sailing, and and uh, have these like YouTube videos on it. Like for the most part, anyway. Um. They're like, oh yeah, we started like three years ago, this is our origin story, blah 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 blah. But nobody's got like... You know... Their first time being on their boat. You know? And, uh... I'm not gonna necessarily log, like, vlog... The whole process of learning how to sail, and, um... All of that. Because that's just preposterous. That's, that's entirely too much. Um... To, to, to concern myself with right now. Um, well, probably. I don't know. Maybe I will. Um, but I, I think that as long as I, I go through the process of, like, buying the ship and, like, how I'm affording it and, like, how much it costs and, you know, all this kind of stuff, I think that as long as I kind of go over that, um, it's it's going to be, like, fine for, for people in my position. Um, and then, and then kind of like, you know, so I did this, I did this, I did this, I did this. And uh, now I'm sailing. You know? And I think that that would take off. I think that that would fit into a nice niche. So I think I'd be able to make um, enough money to get by, maybe? Hopefully? I don't know. If I can't, then I can just continue cruising around, uh, you know, Canada. BC. Like, that's that's fine. I'm not, I'm not complaining about that. Like, even just cruising around Vancouver Island is like a, a dream. Um... So there's so much to do here, and so many places to explore just here, you know? That, uh... I'd love to do that. Um, even if it's not, you know, these exotic, you know, going over the Mediterranean, and, um... You know, doing all this. <clears throat> um... Yeah. But, it'll happen. It'll happen. Um... One day. It, 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 I have, I have never felt the same way I do about sailing as I do. I, I've never felt about anything else the same way I do about sailing, I guess is the way I, I can put it. It's, uh, nothing else has, like, I don't know, like, itched that itch of, like, excitement and, like, desire for, for change and, and action as 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 the the idea of like live aboard sailing as because it's it's just it's such an incredibly exciting prospect to me i um i can't i can't i can't imagine not doing it you know what i mean like i i feel i like honestly it's it's gonna sound insane but i feel almost not quite not quite but almost as like strongly that like I have to do this almost not not really but like almost okay in, in a different way for sure as uh, as I did when I, I first learned that I was uh, when I first realized that I was trans and like realized that like I have to like be a woman and like transition and like do this like I have to um, it, it's, it's like it's like a different kind of, of feeling though um, with regards to the whole trans part, um, you know, I, uh, it's less of a feeling of, like, I won't be fulfilled if I don't do it, and more of a feeling of, like, this is just wrong, I have to do this, or it's, like, wrong, I have to fix this, you know, um, but it, it's, it's, like, it's, like, almost as, as strong a feeling of, like, motivation for it, which is, uh, is insane to me, because, like, I've never been so excited to get started on, on working towards a, a goal of mine, ever. It's incredible. And uh, it's all just because, like, the other day I just happened upon a channel and then just happened to watch um, a video of uh, sailing on Delos. And I was like, this seems really cool. And then I, you know, my ev everything kind of shifted at that point and uh, I know it sounds insane because we're only a few days out and like nothing's actually happened but like I promise you 
I promise you. At least, like, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe I, I, I take some, some onboard experience, like lessons and training and stuff, and I end up hating it. It's a possibility. Um, I, I'd be surprised, but uh, it's a possibility. But I, I promise you this: I will at least do that. There, there is no way I won't. You know, like. I just, I just, I can't not do that. I have to at least know if it's something that I want to do. And again, like, a lot of these decisions that I want to make, like, right now, like, I want to do it, let's just go do it, let's just go buy it. Like, you have to kind of, like, calm down and, and recognize that, um, there's a process to all of this, you know? And, like, you have to, to handle it in the right order. And, uh, the right order for me is definitely, you know, the, the whole losing weight and getting a little bit more fit so that I can handle the responsibilities of being on board a ship. Um... And, uh, then, um, also, I have to, uh, whatchamacallit, whatchamacallit, I have to get experience with it and learn how to actually do it, um, and then I have to, like, you know, find the way to, to financially make it work, to, to actually buy a boat. Living on the boat is fine, but like procuring a boat is is is, is hard, um, for sure. So you know there there there's a process. I can't just like you know start deciding that I'm gonna start my my sailing here and I'm gonna start doing this here and I'm gonna buy this kind of a boat and it's gonna be like this one and like you know all this kind of stuff because like I just I can't know the answer to those until later. But I wish I could because like I want to make these decisions and I want to like do more. But, like, right now, pretty much all I can do is wait until summer. Like, wait until uh, the weather's good and, like, you know, these sailing lessons are up. And, like, I'll, I'll, like what, what I can do is I can, um, I can see, like, about, uh, like, what the wait lists are, right? For, for getting these lessons or training or whatever and then, like, what the costs are and stuff. Um, so that I can get onto those wait lists if they are long. Um... But yeah, no, it's 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 gonna happen. You know, like I'm gonna I'm gonna own a boat. And I'm gonna live on the boat. There, there's you just like phase through the ground. The heck, we're landed at uh, 35 here, by the way, because it's getting an hour and a half. It's getting a little long. Um, and I've already been recording for like an hour before this because I had to do like twice. Um. So, like, right now, my brain's like, did I talk about this one in this episode, or did I talk about it in the previous episode that I recorded that got deleted? I don't know. I yeah. Um. Anyway. I'm, I'm just really excited about uh, about it. And I, I wish it could, like, happen faster. You know? Like, I want it to be, like, you know, next week that I, I buy a boat and I move out onto it and, and start living and, you know, have people over and, like, go sailing around the coast and, and, and have a ton of fun and, like, do all this kind of stuff and... You know, like, I want that, like, now. But, unfortunately, I have to take it a little slower and... Yeah. But I don't want to. I want to just go. You know what I mean? I want to just go. So. But, you know, is what it is. So, whatever. It'll be okay. Um... It's just, it's just patience. Patience is a virtue. And uh, when it comes to anticipating something, I don't have very good patience. I don't know many people that do. When it comes to keeping myself occupied, like for instance, you know, being able to, to not go terribly bored on a, on a long crossing, um, a long passage or whatever it is, uh, that I can do. I can keep myself occupied. I can keep myself, you know, having fun and not being terribly bored. I, uh,. When I'm like waiting for something, I, I can't keep myself from being excited about it. You know what I mean? And I don't think many people can. But uh, I, th I think I wish I could, just because um, it can be annoying to be like so excited that you can't keep your mind off of something, because it just like it bleeds into all of your thoughts. It's like all I can think about right now is is sailing and like buying a boat and learning how to sail and like doing all of these things that I just. I want to do so badly. It's like the only thing that I can think about. 
And whenever I try to think about something else, it always it always like ends up coming back to, to sailing anyway. It's just uh It's what I want. I'm getting pretty good at the recoil management on these, eh? There's like no recoil. It's crazy. This this is what it does if I don't try and correct it. See so in case you haven't played it. So that's 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 quite a difference of uh, for for the personal skill of being able to, to to correct that recoil, eh? I mean, it's pretty good, right? I'm getting pretty good at it. Got some ammo here. It's almost like it's not moving. There's no like no jitter or anything. It's just like a nice smooth, just like there's a little bit of jitter, but like look how consistent it is, man. I'm good at it. Feels good to be good at something. One day I'll be good at sailing. See, it just bleeds into everything, man. I am excited, though. I, I haven't been this excited for something in, in a long, long time. Yeah, wave 35, dude. So we're going to kill ourselves on the Matriarch. I could kill her. I was going to if it was like a different bot. I don't know. Maybe we'll kill the Matriarch. Sure, we'll kill her. I remember dying on her here, I believe, once. Back when I didn't know how to completely trivialize the Matriarch. Back when she was like a hard boss, and I would like actually kite her around stuff rather than just doing the normal thing and well, not really the normal thing, but like the better thing and just um, walking around her. <laughs> um, yeah, she's she's not uh, she's not a very hard boss. There we go. Now you kite. Now you kite. This is like my only practice for the recall management right here too. It's just the matriarch basically. That's it. That's the matriarch. Not a hard fight. I might do a tutorial on her because a lot of people have trouble with her. And uh, I, could, I could make a tutorial. I'm gonna do that, I think. Tomorrow, maybe. If we, die down here, no one has to bury us. we can't die without munitions. It's not right. Let's go kill ourselves. Anyway. Sailing. It's, it's uh it surprised me too. I had no idea I'd be that interested in it when I uh, when I started watching these. But I am. You know? I really am. I can't see myself not doing it, you know? Again, like I talked about it. Like, the only thing, the only reason I don't own a boat right now is because I can't afford it. Like, I, I can't afford to, uh... Like, putting aside buying the boat, which is expensive and out of my budget... Just like owning a boat is outside my budget. Or at least I thought it was. Until now, when all of a sudden it's like, no, actually it's uh, cheap to, to just live on a boat. So, yeah. I'm going to go and do that. I mean, it'll be like I should have maybe done a little bit more. Um, so my, 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 my plan while I'm kind of like cruising around BC, kind of getting set up, is to uh, to install all of the conveniences that I need. Like uh, I'd want a water maker. The boat might not necessarily come with one. Um... You know, maybe replace some some of the older parts on the boat and get things into proper ship shape. You know, um, you know, maybe a dive engine or whatever, um, like wetsuits, um, all the toys that I'm gonna want while I'm cruising around the world, um, and uh, you know, kind of just just spend the time in a relatively cheap environment, living on the boat, having fun saving money and uh buying toys lots of lots of fun toys and uh kind of get kind of getting equipped for a uh, a fulfilling um a very fulfilling um life and then you know once i'm all equipped i've got the boat paid off and i've got all the fun toys that i'd want I can head out, you know? 
Um, go wherever I want, pretty much in the world. Just go. After you fill out all the paperwork and like you know all that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, like the 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 time I'd spend coasting around uh, British Columbia would just be living on the boat and um, kind of getting prepared for uh, for a very fulfilling journey around wherever I want to go. And I don't know, I wouldn't stop at one lap around the world. I'd probably continue doing more laps. You know, just keep on going. You know, maybe I, I make my first stop off at uh, Japan somewhere or something. You know, just cross the Pacific uh, Pacific Ocean. I don't know. I don't know which ocean is the hardest. Probably North Pacific is probably one of the, the, the worst ones. I imagine it's very cold. Um, but, I don't know. I don't know. I can't know until later. And I wish I could know, because I want to be excited about it and, like, be excited about the things that I know, but I can't know. Um... But I am, I am so, so incredibly excited. I cannot wait until I get started on this. I am, it, it's going to be such a huge change in my life when, uh, when I eventually like start selling everything off and then buy a boat. But that's going to do it for today. Th uh, thanks for watching. Ah, I didn't check the enemy stuff. This would have been an episode where it would have been cool too. My bad. Uh, thanks for watching. Like the video if you like it. Subscribe to more in the future. Comment if you have anything to say. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.